the floor is now open for questions. Please stand up and ask. Uh, the talk was very uh, nice and uh, addressed our immediate uh, this thing. This is for across all age groups and across all things. Kannada uh, uh, I'd like him to ask you one thing. You said we have to be non-judgmental. So let's say I have a destructive thought or a negative thought which comes to me. Should I not judge it that yes, it is negative. I should not think about this. And and next is like. Let's say somebody is doing some uh, negative action. Let's say he is hurting an animal or he is throwing some garbage out. Should I not judge that person that that is wrong, that action is wrong or what he is doing is wrong and I shouldn't be doing that? Shouldn't I classify them as negative and positive? When I, when I was talking about being non-judgmental, usually when we judge, most of the times when it is, usually it's on for the negative way. And we won't have all the facts. And then we judge with very limited facts. And even though we know we have all the facts, we will never know the real things, what is happening. So. Um, that is what I meant by non-judgmental and especially when we are um, judging with respect to interpersonal relationships. The first aspect when you said, when you are getting negative thoughts, it is not about judging you or being aware. Judging again, you will uh, put either a positive or a negative thing when you judge. Instead of that, you just have to be aware, oh no, this is a negative thought, I need to change that's all that is that is what that is not judging you are reflecting and analyzing and just saying without any emotions without putting either positive or negative aspect to that so uh, the second aspect when you see somebody doing something not right Again, it is not judging. You are just looking at the situation, the reality, and making an analysis. Even then, um, if I have to say, let, let me think it through, and then um, I will come back to you in a second. What, when we use the judge in plain English terms is little different than what I am using from a neuroscientific manner. Just like when I talked about the attitude, attitude when we use it in English means something little different than uh, in a neuroscience perspective. So um, in the same manner, when we look at something negative that is happening, we are analyzing the situation and taking actions rather than, oh, he should not have done this, this is right, this is wrong, it cannot be done. That is again going into a negative aspect without knowing everything that is happening. But we accept the reality as it is and then if it needs to be changed at that moment, we can just change that. That is what I mean, not to um, reflect on a negative situation and just walk away, that is not what I'm saying, being non-judgmental. Without knowing everything, all the facts, we come to conclusions, jump to conclusions, and that is what is being judgmental is about. Uh, Does that help you? Yes. Huh? Classification of positive and negative minds, uh, are you being mindful of uh, such a thing? So, classification of positive and negative and uh, let's say bad habits or something, so we, it's necessary, but then we normally judge people as that's a bad habit, I he's know. a bad person, so isn't that? It, it is right, because that is what, um, again, positive, negative, good or bad, it is based on a certain frame of our own values and judgments, because that is why for one person, the, what is, um, bad is good for the other person, right? 
because they'll be able to rationalize themselves. So um, we need to overcome. Uh, however, there are certain standards and societal uh, aspects. So based on that, then we say it is either right or wrong or good or bad. And that varies because in one family, uh, 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 parents might allow certain things for a child, then it, it is okay. We, we, the, we, whereas in the other family, um, whatever that was okay in one family may not be so in the other family. So it is relative is what I'm saying. Unless there are certain hard core values that it is uh, uh, common all across, then it is different. Does that make sense to you? Because it was a general question, I can only answer in a general way. Um, yeah. But true mindfulness, what this is, you just have to accept the way it is without even labeling. Yeah, ma'am, just to remind that uh, question, whatever you have told that in question hour we will discuss how to transform these negative thoughts into positive actions. So, again, using those two techniques, CBT and mindfulness. CBT, we will, through metacognition skills, we will know we have to be aware and track those ants and be able to change it right away by self evaluation process and um, over replace those negative thoughts with a positive thought. How long will it last? That is the uh, main question because we will replace a negative thought until the next negative thought comes about. Which means the mind is such that the thoughts are so fleeting keep replacing until and unless there is a permanent change, it will keep coming back. That is why just CBT in itself is not the end all. It won't um, change our negativity completely. That is where the mindfulness practice comes about to help in rewiring because when we are used to certain negative thoughts, it will happen all the time. When we are mindful, when we do not give power to those negative thoughts as they are happening when we are doing the mindfulness practice, that is what will help in the long run to rewire our brains. So the two techniques together will produce the results over a period of time. It is a negative habit. That means we should stop watching TV or how that we can convert into a positive thing? That I, I just okay. Now we have a, a specific um, example, watching TV. Let us just take first the metacognition skill, how we are going to use CBT to be able to overcome. It's an unwanted habit that we want, uh, we have, watching too much TV. First thing is, we know we are watching too much TV. That awareness has to come, that self-awareness. That is the most important aspect. Usually it is the parents who tell us you are watching too much TV. We don't even admit that ourselves. So until and unless we get that awareness, oh no, I'm watching too much TV. That is the first aspect. And the next aspect, I know I'm watching too much TV, but I don't want to change. We know that we are doing, that means we know what is right or what is wrong, but I don't want to change, that is the next step. So we need to change our belief system to, okay, now I know I'm watching too much TV, the next aspect is I want to change. The next step, even the parents agree oh, I'm, uh, you're watching too much TV or we ourselves know that we are watching too much TV. But only parent wants us to change, not us, right? So the next step is, again, even we want to change. It's not, we won't be able to change because somebody else is asking us to change. Until and unless that impetus comes within us, it is not going to be possible. Even if it is possible, it's only 
a stop gap. It's a short term. It is not going to be possible in the long run. So any long run, long term change that we want to do, it has to come from within. The third thing is, even if it comes from within, it will still take a long time to change because that intensity has to be so strong. That is where the Hebbian law comes in because watching TV, that intensity is so much. If I have to go back and then talk about that unlimited potential we talked about the brain, if you think about the neuronal connections that happen, watching the TV neuronal connection, that hard wiring would happen like one to 100,000 neuron. If you just, I'm just giving you an analogy. It is so intense watching TV. So one to 100,000 neurons are all connected and it is hardwired. And now because, yes, I've thought about it. Yes, mom says I'm watching too much TV. Okay, maybe I should not watch as much TV, at least during exams. So these are the weak signals. It is like one to 10,000 neuron connection. There is no competition there. That is why we keep failing, even though we want to change that unwanted habit, it is not possible. So the, when we need to change, that has to be so intense, it has to be much more than, yes, I want to watch the TV. That intensity has to be more than only we'll be able to change. Again, that goes with that heavy and law, neurons that fire together, wire together. So for that rewiring, it has to be even more intense than the already hardwired. We'll take this last question. Uh, how would you compare this combination of CBT with mindfulness and meditation techniques? Because meditation techniques also cleanse the mind by removing the unwanted negative thoughts. How would you compare? Absolutely. No doubt about it. Now I'm presenting in a scientific manner and then we use mindfulness terminology. As I said, whatever I'm saying is nothing new. We know. But what we are taught that we have to do meditation. I'm talking in general, either 30 minutes or maybe 20 minutes, most of the times cross-legged and then you know, closing our eyes. But I just showed you one type of mindfulness. We can be, our eyes can be open, we can still be mindful. We can be doing things and still be mindful, like mindful eating, mindful cooking, mindful cutting the vegetables, mindful brushing our teeth, mindfully dressing ourselves up. All of these are all aspects. So when we are being mindful, then we are using our conscious mind all the time, not going into the habitual pattern going into autopilot because for a healthy brain the tip that we saw the more and more and more we use the higher center being doing whatever we are doing in a conscious manner that is the best way but absolutely any meditation technique that we use we will be able to we have done it we have seen but i'm just giving the evidence that we have on mindfulness that is all but they're both the same no difference Uh, a quick follow-up question to the TV thing. So you, you said that you need to have an alternate stimuli which is much larger than the primary stimuli which is what you are kicking off. Now, uh, if that were very easy, people would kick off habits. Uh, what do you think would be the reason why we are not able to create alternate stimuli or alternate fields which are going to kick habits out. Again, a great question. When I say stimuli, I don't, yes, it will be nicer to develop another habit which is more positive. I'm not talking about that. That is a better way. But even taking this, when I say a uh, uh, stimulus to change the habit has to be very intense. That means our state of mind, we didn't even talk about state of mind while we're doing this. I just talked about the belief system that we need to change. Our state of mind has a very big role and then there are many clinical experiments that I have done which I did not go through here. 
when we are happy to change that habit that is what is going to help us to be able to change the habit because then we are now i'm going again giving some scientific evidence when we are happy then the reward system in the brain kicks in it's the dopamine that is released in the brain that helps us to be happy to be able to change that habit usually why do we change that habit unwanted habit everybody else is saying that i, I should not be watching tv i also know this is the feeling that we have and this is the reason we want to change however if we have a happy state of mind to be able to change that habit then the reward system kicks in releasing the dopamine to help make that process happen 